and welcome back to EVE Online and here is my Caracal and this is a, a very well used chip of mine I have flown Caracals for a decade now this is a very standard passive tank Caracal fit this is actually the fit I've used in the Abyss it's old footage due to the IT, issue, IT issues I've gone on about a lot lately I've lost some stuff so I've had to cobble this slightly back together and this is also where I was skill wise when I did the vigils which is perhaps more relevant anyway in the rigs we've got the two field extenders and one em screen reinforcer that's because in the abyss obviously you're taking multi damage you need to fill that hole you might just want to reinforce thermal or kinetic if you were only fighting serpentis up in the high slots we've got five rapid light missile launchers uh, the actual ones I use in the videos on me on the vigils are cheaper than this they're the limos version so even cheaper fit than the 12.3 million this cost i know some players think that uh rapid light launchers are pvp weapons um, and you use the light missile launchers on pve i don't agree i know you've got the reload times to deal with and situationally that can really catch you out in pve or pvp but overall you get much more dps you do uh, with the light missile launchers you might get a lot more power grid left to play with for your tank we'll look at that another day anyway on this passive fit uh, on this one i've got two restrained shield extenders the restrained means they uh, increase your signature radius by less than the other types they're also much cheaper than the compact ones you might use when you're short of power grid in there i've got the uh, cap battery now that is to keep the micro warp drive running when you're in the abyss that's not going to be used on the vigils we're going to replace that with a target painter we've got the adaptive vulnerability field one there you go it puts our resistances up across the board again very useful in the abyss you might want to mix up and match so serpentis are going to be doing thermal and kinetic damage you might want to put a thermal rig in and a kinetic field reinforcer uh, the specific damage type reinforcers also use less CPU to fit. For propulsion, we've got the enduring micro warp drive. I've got the enduring one on here basically because, again, in the abyss, you want to be uh, flying as fast as you can, as much as you can, because time is life in the abyss. Also, to take into account in the costing of this fit, is it's got no drones in it. That could be a couple of million, depending on what you get for your two drones. Down in the bottom slots, we have got three ballistic control unit ones. They're just going to up the DPS, and uh, although you do get a stacking penalty on three of them, that's absolutely fine. And on a Caracal, unless I'm trying to do something tricky or specific, it will get three of them. Now, that a uh, compact cap battery up in the mid slots to keep the uh, micro warp drive burning. That needs an incredible 60 megawatts of my power grid. So we've got the uh, compact reactor control unit down in the low slots, so we can fit that to the ship. Now, really, to convert this to any kind of combat, you might want to take that out because we're losing the cap battery for a target painter. Replace it with a damage control. But to be honest, you get about 4 or 5% bonus on your shield resistances from a damage control. And all of the tank in this Caracal is its shield. I, I hopefully am not going to be on grid when I get into armor. Uh, if I am, I'm probably going to die so for the vigil sites we're going to fit a target painter that basically increases the signature radius of whatever it's shooting at which in effect it shoots uh, by being you need to target something and then fire it at it in its cycles um, and that bonus will count for your drones for your missiles for your fleet mates for your guns it's quite a versatile piece of equipment and what not, not one to be overlooked if you wanted just to convert this quickly into pvp you just put a disruptor in the mid slot and you also have the option if you want to put in a web in there if you're on a site with lots of frigates you might want to slow down so uh yeah that kind of uh middle mid slot as i've got this fit showed there is kind of like a utility slot depending on the exact application this fit is in not in any way as i've said optimized to do a serpentis vigil that's kind of the point of this you don't have to be spot on at the end of the video i'm actually going to show you where this character is now which is just below the skill point cap for a free alpha account, which is 5 million, and uh, show you the fit that he can now use. We'll also look at a couple of variations of the fit and a long range version of the fit. But anyway, for now, with this low skill ship and uh, 
this uh, low cost fit we are going to take on a vigil first of all i'll just show you where we were skill wise just to show you how 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 early on in my career as an alpha we did this right so as you can see on here we have got about one and a half million skill points so far we have got kaldari cruiser free we're training level four uh gunnery isn't relevant to this but as you can see we're not getting anywhere far We've got level four a missile launcher operation. The rest of the kind of support skills at free. Um, they're to do with the application of your damage. They're very important that you do train uh, as an alpha. You're a little bit restricted on what you can train, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. So here we are. We're just landing at the acceleration gate into the vigil, which is the entry point. Now, bear in mind, the vigil is a site you need to scan down. Now, I usually do my thing with the heron. Um, and you, I chalk the vigil loot, you know, partially up to the heron. It's finding it's finding the sites for the combat ship then to come and do. In the uh, Alpha Makes 400 million a day video, I did one uh, a vigil site in a very low skill mower. In fact, it was the first site I ever did in that mower and got a very nice loot drop. Thank you. Anyway, we're here in the first room, so it's just a question of targeting what we can, targeting the closest ones. The frigates are obviously going to be quicker. They're going to come out to you. Now, my basic tactic, I stay zoomed out. I like to see where things are. And uh, I was going to look the site up for you. And we will get to that on, on Eve Uni, just so you can see it kind of written down. But by getting that zoomed out view of the site, it, it tells you where the, the rats are in relation to you. Um, my basic technique, especially with low skills and a cheap ship, is range control. By controlling the range, you control the DPS that these rats can apply. We'll figure out what their maximum range is. We'll figure out how to get into one, kill him and get out. We've got to play this quite carefully. It is going to take an hour. Now, loot-wise, I think it's more than worth it. It's an hour well spent. Also, it's an hour spent flying your ship and getting used to your ship and doing things like this. How much? How long can I run the micro warp drive for before I run out of cap? Uh, how effective is the target painter? Am I better off killing the frigates first or going for the bigger ships first? You know, all of this is just experimentation. Now, later on, when you're skilled up or you've got more risk, you can buy ships where you just land on a site, you do, you do what you do, and it kind of all takes care of itself. And that's quite a nice passive way, almost, of generating loot. This way is a really nice way of learning how to fly your ship. Now, what I'm figuring out is the relative ranges. I'm engaging the frigates as they come out to me. I haven't put my drones out yet, but I'm just about to. There we go. Now, if I lose, I think I lose a drone. Uh, I'm narrating this obviously after the event, so excuse me, and I can't see the screen too well when I'm recording, so if I do the odd wrong, and just forgive me, yeah, I know you're all nice people out there. Anyway, so I'm taking down the ones that are coming out with me, I'm using the drones on them, I've got my rapid lights going out on the battle cruisers. now you'll see the uh, damage coming in on me is dropping, and you actually saw there I lost my uh, target lock on some of those ships because they're out of range, which is fine, so I can carry on shooting the one that I've crept over towards. And remember, by double-clicking just out in space, that's how uh, you basically manually fly your ship. And uh, do it like this. Isolate the ones you want to take out, out and then charges. creep back in. Target your next battle cruiser, and uh, do it one by one. Now you can actually see I've just spawned the core drug dealer. He's the guy you've got to kill. He's kind of the boss of the room. Now when you do kill him, I believe you get a message then saying that the uh, the mechanism has unlocked. But you can't use the gate. You do have to kill everything in this room. Just bear that in mind so don't get frustrated. I will show you the Eve Uni page in a few minutes somewhere along the line. Now, I've no intention of making you watch me do this for an hour. It's very much a kind of, uh, this is the technique. Manually fly, manually control your range. Now, if I brought a uh, mobile tractor unit up with me, which I haven't, and I don't usually probably use them too much on these sites, the loot drop is the loot drop at the end, not the bits and pieces off of these guys anyway. You could just set yourself up and orbit that. That is an option. Um, as I say, I quite like this flying around. It's a bit more engaging. Uh, it depends on you, the time you've got, and the attention you can give to the game. So I've taken myself into the range where I could lock those guys, although I've lost my range again now. I'm getting uh, sensor damped by one of those frigates, so I need to take him out. He's actually the one that's dropping my locks. 
But do note, my shield is now recharging. I mean, I'm at a point where I can engage one of the battle cruisers, take out the frigates, and uh, really be taking no damage whatsoever now. So these, these are mine, one at a time. <laughs> you can be as brave as you like. The closer you get, the more DPS you're going to get. So there we are. We're back on that pesky little Tristan. I'll get some missiles just to speed this along and the target painter. So they're kind of pesky ones. They're not going to really do you any harm, but they're just stopping me from kiting this the way that I'd like to. Now one of the other fits that I'll show you very quickly at the end of this video is a very long range fit. Much, uh, a bit less tank, much more range. Uh, you could sit well out of the range of every ship on this site. And uh, you'd have less D DPS, it would kind of be a bit safer, but that's an option. They're quite handy PvP for surprising the heck out of people with. But um, we'll get rid of these sensor dampening little frigates. And then it's just all down to us, really. We are completely in control of this room. There's the drug trader. He's the, he's the boss, but as I say, they've all got to go down. And now we can stop them sensor damping us. We can just do this at our leisure. I'll be back when we have made some progress. Okay, we've come back to the action. Um, the last guys are in a little bit of a cluster. I've let myself get in a bit close just to really, you know, you can see the DPS coming in now and how quick. So we repaired up. We've come back, back to the first room. We're just finishing off the last battle cruiser, and there's another Tristan buzzing around. As you'll see, because we've had to get in close to those guys, they were they. Stayed in, stayed in quite a tight formation couldn't actually kite one of the ships out they've still made us use over half of our cap back up and quite a chunk of our shield so uh, certainly with this fit and this skills we're going to go and repair before we venture into the last room right so the first room's clear let's look at the Eve Uni page see what we're in store for in the second room in the first room there is a Serpentis hangar that can drop faction loot it dropped me junk anyway second room when we first land in there, there's five battle cruisers, and there are three sentry tower guns. The sentry towers will apply consistent, long range, and effective damage at us the whole time we're in this room. But if we kill one, it spawns the second spawn, and we don't want that coming on top too quickly. In that second spawn, there are three frigates that can disrupt and web us. The last thing we want is everything to land on top of us, uh, apply all that DPS. You've seen how quickly they can hit our shields if they get in close. So we're going to play it a little bit carefully. We are going to control the range. If we're very lucky, the only thing that is a target really in our second room is Tago Erklen himself. He's the guy with all the loot. We want to kill him as soon as possible and get out. Right, here we go. We are warping into the second room. Um, as I said, do bear in mind if you're in low sec, somewhere dangerous, and you're doing a big duel, anyone that follows you into the site, they come into the second room, they land right where I've landed now. Uh, it's going to take them no time at all. Uh, they can pop you and run very quickly. So D scan if you're in here. And there may be hostiles. Right, we're going to play exactly the same game here. I can't do anything about the sentry guns right now. If I can't afford to kill one, I don't want that second spawn. I've got to get around figure out where these battle cruisers are, take them out one by one, and minimize the damage that I'm getting by controlling the range on the other guys. So as you can see, it's the sentry towers that are just bang, 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 bang. And uh, there's very little I can do about it. Also note, there are eight battle cruisers in this room when I've landed in it, not the five that Eve Uni predicted. So uh, whether that's changed over time, which does happen, and it's a good thing that things do not stay the same in Eve. Oh, and there's lots to talk about on that front, and we will very soon in another video. And I certainly want to get the number of those battle cruisers down, perhaps not kill all of them before I kill a sentry gun and spawn the second wave. So a couple of minutes later, we've killed two of the battle cruisers. I'm desperately trying to kill a third before I need to warp out because uh, our shield is going to give out on us very soon. I could be overheating the invulnerability field. That would help, and they do burn, as in take damage quite slowly. But with my low thermodynamic skill, I haven't tried that yet. And with the reload counting down on the rapid lights, we're going to warp away to safety and uh, know that we got one just about to die when we get back so uh we're about 25 minutes 
30 minutes into this site, but we're getting there. We've landed back in the room and we've landed very close into most of the rats, which we're not too happy about. So we're literally just going to double click away from all of them and uh, burn away as far as we can in vulnerability field on. Start shooting. I'm trying to find the one that's almost dead. That would be a handy one to finish off. Look how much he's repped while we were away repping. Bit cheeky. But as you can see, uh, the ships are about to open up on us. There, you can see in the middle, they've all missed. Because we're burning, we're pulling range. We're getting across them as well. I'm deliberately kind of trying to hamper their ability to apply damage to us in every way possible. So I'm flying kind of a diagonally away and across the battle cruisers. Um, so I'm a good moving target for them. The sentry guns, unfortunately, is just bang, 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 bang. There's nothing I can do about that. Another battle cruiser down. We're going to get on the one that was almost half damaged. And then we're going to worry about when we actually going to pop a sentry tower and get that second spawn in. So I've just killed a sentry tower and triggered the second spawn. What my goal is now is to try to take down the three escorter frigates. They're the ones that can disrupt and web me. I've not got a huge amount of shield left. There's only two sentry towers left hitting me. It's kind of methodical damage. I'm staying out of range of all of the other ships on grid and letting those frigates kite out to me. Once they're off, I'll go and repair, come back. But at least then I'll know there's nothing that can keep me pinned on this site. Um, I don't know how close I'm going to have to go in and how many of these battle cruisers I'm going to have to kill before I can get to the loot. So getting these guys off the board just gives me so much more peace of mind. There's the second one. Just locking up the third one now. Sentry guns, bang, bang, bang. I've only got one drone left. I'm not bothering to put him back out. I may as well save him for another day. He's my lucky drone. I like him. Been around for ages. Anyway, I'm going to take down this last frigate. Safe and sound. Warp away. Repair. And uh, I'll be back when I come back into the room. And then we'll get on with the kind of end game. It all depends on what the rats do. Right, so we're back in the room as it were. And uh, I'm targeting the loot man, old Tago there. Now, when I said it depends on what the rats do, it kind of really depends on where they spawn in relation to the structure. He seems to have spawned behind it. He does have a habit. He's a very aggressive little loot man, this Tago. He does like to come out at you. I think the building's in the way. I'm going to kill him first anyway. At least I kind of know where he is. And then I'm going to see. I haven't tried this yet. I certainly haven't tried it with this Caracal. I'm going to try and get in and get the loot and get out. See if I can tank the damage. Do this as quickly as possible. There's not really much of value to be left um, on this site to get. I'll take stuff down just to drop off DPS as I go in. But my task now is to manually kind of fly over and get the loot. I don't think it's going to be as simple as just approach. I'll sped this bit up to four times speed. I'm just approaching, and uh, yeah, something's going wrong in there. And if you look, he's tucked up right behind that part of the structure. I'm having no trouble taking the damage. The problem is, now that I'm hung up in here and getting hung up, back on normal speed now, by the way, um, I'm going to be a really easy target. If I, if I were to have sort of not paid attention, when, when I'm here waggling around, I've got zero velocity. The damage will pile up very quickly and you can see that it is, so I'm burning away. And you can get hung up on a, an asteroid or something when you're mining and the same thing will happen. So do pay a little bit of attention uh, if you're trying to be too AFK or uh, casual. Uh, if you get hung up on a piece of scenery, you may not be able to warp, you'll have zero velocity and even little rats will kill you. Anyway, I'm going to speed up again get round to where I can get this loot. See how I get on with the damage at the moment. Because I'm moving nicely, you can see uh, the ships are missing me. The gun is just relentless. But there's now only one of them left. So uh, I can certainly handle the DPS. It's just a question of taking a little bit of time to get around this structure. Alive. And we're back up to four times speed for this segment. And uh, I'm pretty impressed with how this Caracal's tanking it. The speed is really helping. We're obviously controlled the range quite nicely. 
There's only a couple of ships left now and one turret. We're going to take that last sentry tower down and then there's just no real DPS left to worry about. There's a battlecruiser lurking in the structure right next to the loot. So we're going to have to get in pretty close to him. But uh, we're back to normal speed now for the final approach on the wreck of Tago. And uh, yeah, I don't think we've really got much to worry about here. What I wouldn't want to do again, I'm going to be really careful that we don't get hung up in here. We're going to grab this loot. Uh, turn round and get out. We don't want to lose all that velocity again. Um, I've also been careful. I've taken a little longer than it maybe could have to get here to save enough capacitor to get burning if we need to get out, which uh, may be what we need to do. So there we go. Look at that. We've got the mid-grade snake. That's a 70 million isk drop. So there we go, that's where we bounce off the structure and lose our velocity. So we're going to just fly straight away, double click away from it, burn away to make sure nothing can go wrong. We don't have to kill anything else. And now this is a little bit different. This is another site. It's the same fit. It's another vigil. And it's later that evening in the system next door. Now it took us about 10 minutes to kill the loot man and get out with the loot on that last site uh, since uh, after we'd killed the first sentry tower and spawned the second wave. Might be a little bit quicker this time. This is what I mean about how variable it is on this last spawn according to where they actually spawn and whether Tago thinks he can just charge straight at you or not. So let's see what happens this time. I'm just bookmarking a wreck so no matter what happens I can get back up here. Uh, you never know. Right, so there you go. The sentry's down. Tago spawned. He's 40 kilometers away. He's 39 kilometers away. And he's, I think, just going to come straight at us on this site. Let's see, shall we? I'm going to target up those escorters. They're, they're the guys, again, that can uh, web me and disrupt me so I can't get away. But uh, Tago, who's melted into the pack a little bit right now, he's one of the furthest ships away from me. But I've pulled my range, so none of those ships can apply any damage to me. And I've stopped burning away. I'm just kind of going to wait. I'm going to get reloaded. And hopefully, Tago is going to take the bait. You can see he's, he's powered his way up my overview. He's now the closest ship to me. He is closing quite quickly, and I'm reloading. So, uh, this is the best that a vigil end room can get. I've been in here about two minutes so far, and it's just me and Tago. Hopefully, ideally, he's going to come out so far I can kill him, run in, get the loot not have to deal with any of the other ships on this site so let's open up on Tago and turn back towards him he's charging towards us I'm not going to burn at him yet I want to keep that capacitor because I, I don't really I've never tried this before how may it go so in we go he's closed right in we're almost going to about to crash into him we're going to orbit him a thousand right there's the loot right there we've swung out a little let's get on that loot no one else is hitting us this is good I like this there we go, we got the mid-grade snake delta, 125 millions worth. Thank you very much, Tago, you mad bugger. And when he spawns and behaves like that, from him spawning to us getting the loot, two minutes, bang on, lovely. I'm going to play around with some of these guys till I have to reload, and then I'm going to go home and count the money. Thank you very much. So that wasn't bad, two sites, 200 million isk with a, a caracal including the drones, probably cost about 15 million. This caracal costs about twice that. It's now fully tech 2 every single part of this, tech 2 drones, every module apart from I think the target painter is tech 2 and the micro warp drive because the enduring is fine on there. I could probably go for the restrained, um, it would increase the signature radius radius bloom but this is just lighter on the cap which is it's handy and as you saw from those sites i had no real issue you know there wasn't too much damage coming in so that was all good difference here really is that now that i've hit and as i'll show you i'm up to nearly 500 million uh, sorry 500 5 million skill points that's the threshold for an alpha on the free account to get over 5 million skill points i need to buy daily injectors I wish I'd got heavy missiles too. I may get it with some of the uh, free skill points they've been giving out lately. 
Um, I have found that something I'm lacking in the Drake, which we'll be looking at very soon, doing sights here in the wormhole. Right, so yeah, that's all there really is to know. We've got about a thousand more base shield hit points. We've got double the DPS, double the price. So in effect, it'll kind of clear the sights in about half the time just by taking the, shield, uh, taking the ships down that much quicker. So this is where your caracal can get to. Now I'm going to show you one variation on my caracal fit. It's one I use quite often. It's basically, I called it kind of longbow. It's long range. We've got different rigs. We've got the same missile launchers. We've got the same low slots. I've got a damage control here because I don't, I don't need the uh, anything to boost my power grid. I'm just going to drop a bit of ammo up in here so we get some numbers. Now, we've lost quite a bit of tank here. We're only running one extender. We're not running the rigs. We need to put the missile range script into the missile computer and the target and range script into the sensor booster. So yeah, here in the mid slots, we've let go of one of the shield extenders. We've kept the an in vulnerability field which is just a one uh, again in this wormhole as i mentioned before i dashed in with some stuff so uh i could get a, a two on there uh tech two but i haven't got one handy we got the sensor booster which is running the targeting range script which include uh, extends our targeting range to 102 kilometers the Missile Guidance Computer, which is running the Missile Range Script, in this case, puts the range of our light missiles out to 75 with the Navy Ammo. We can get a bit, little bit longer with uh, the Tech 2 Ammo, but I generally keep these handy. Um, they're not the cheapest ammo, but they're the most versatile if you get into PvP, especially with the long reload on the Rapid Lights. It's not as if you can uh, switch your ammo too circumstantially. So this is going to let us lock out to 100. This is only the Alpha. My Amiga character that runs this fit can shoot. The missiles will actually get, I think, over 100 kilometers. The idea with this ship is to basically land on grid with a, an enemy if you're doing PvP, maybe two or three of you. You land on grid, they think you're so far away you can't hurt them. You lock them, you Alpha them, and they're dead. Um, these were really good about against some Kaiti Kikamoras that we had some issues with in the in the pocket a while ago. They got killed and they never came back. In the rigs, we've dropped the tank rigs. We've gone for two of the fuel cache rigs, which basically increases the flight time of your missiles, which therefore extends their range because they can fly for 15% longer. They'll get 15% further. Uh, we've got two of those. And then we've got one of the hydraulic bay thrusters fitted. That's actually increasing the velocity of the missiles by 15%, which again is in effect a 15% range, uh, range increase. All stacks up, we can hit out to about 75 kilometers. PVE-wise, you could land on a site, stay about 70, 70 kilometers away. Very little on that site is going to hit you. Anything that comes out to get you, you can pick up as it comes out. You're going to take very little damage, so the fact you've got that much less tank is not going to be an issue. Same in PvP, because in theory nothing's going to be able to shoot back. You land on grid, 75 kilometers away, you're out for it, and he's dead. Simple as that. So, yeah, that's a little variation, but that's what these ships are for. They've got all these slots to be played with. We'll be looking at maybe an active tank caracal in the near future when I move into that side of things. So, anyway, there's me. There's the Alpha Caracal. We've had a very good little uh, run of sights in this ship. I love the Caracal. It's fast enough to kind of get away with cruising around in low sec with, um, as long as you're a little bit careful. It can put up a de decent fight with the micro warp drive. You've got the options of braking, tackle, braking range, controlling range a little bit. And uh, yeah, trying to keep yourself alive. A really fun ship, not outrageously expensive, and one I thoroughly recommend. So anyway, I hope you found this useful and entertaining or some weird combination of the two. Leave us a like, leave us any comments that you feel like leaving us, and subscribe if you want to stay in touch. Now that the computer is up and running, this is this little segment is the first bit I've been able to record actually on my PC for about a month now, and I'm very pleased we are back and operational. So for now, take care and goodbye.